What's going on, Imperials? I've talked about the best new abilities to come from Sun and Moon, and the worst new abilities, but there are still so many more left that I thought I'd talk about each of them. This isn't a ranking list, just an informative video about all the cool ins and outs that these Pokémon have to offer. So, here are even more new abilities from Sun and Moon. The first ability is Battery, and is exclusive to Chargebug, the Battery Pokémon. Never would have guessed. Battery powers up ally Pokémon's special attack by 30%. This of course means that it's only useful in doubles. Unfortunately, Chargebug has limited viability in combat. But it does make sense that the Pokédex entries say that Vikavolt sometimes pick up Chargebug in order to boost their power, because that's what he actually does. Next is Beast Boost, and it's the ability exclusive to all of the Ultra Beasts. Even though they all share the same ability, it doesn't affect them in the same way. Beast Boost raises the user's highest stat after they've defeated an enemy. For instance, if Feromosa defeats an enemy, its physical attack will get a boost, but if it's with Celesteela, then it would be the special attack. As if the Ultra Beasts weren't powerful enough. Berserk is Drampa's ability that boosts special attack once the user's health becomes half or lower. This is especially impressive considering Drampa's already high special attack. I don't know for certain if you gain the boost and recover some health, if you'll be able to gain the boost again once your health gets lowered. Dancer is the fitting ability exclusive to Oricorio. It automatically copies the dance move used by another Pokémon on the field, without taking up its own turn. Most of the moves that are in this category are status moves like Dragon Dance, Feather Dance, and Teeter Dance. However, the attacks Fiery Dance and Petal Dance can both be copied in addition to whichever move you've chosen to use. Also, obviously, Oricorio's signature move, Revelation Dance, counts, which means if two Oricorio are fighting and they both use Revelation Dance, there would be four moves in one round. That could get old pretty fast. Electric Surge activates Electric Terrain for five turns upon entering battle. The same goes for the abilities Psychic Surge, Grassy Surge, and Misty Surge for their respective terrains. The terrains boost the power of their respective elements and give other specialized effects. Electric Terrain prevents sleep, Grassy Terrain restores health, Misty Terrain prevents status conditions. Wait, really? Electric Terrain does sleep, but Misty Terrain does all the status conditions? But what's the point of that? Oh well. And of course, Psychic Terrain prevents priority moves. Emergency Exit causes the Pokémon to switch out of battle once their health is below half. The ability Wimp Out has the exact same functionality. And of course, these are the exclusive abilities of Wimpod and Golisopod. I'll be honest, I don't really see how this is all that useful. I know the eject button and red card are items and everything, but I never use them because I like to control when I switch my own Pokémon. Personal experience may have tempered these abilities in my mind. After looking for a Mimikyu for a long time, I finally found one! And I didn't want to kill it, obviously, so I switched in my lowest level person at the time, which happened to be a Wimpod. Yeah, I forgot the ability did that, so Mimikyu was gone forever. I found one another one eventually, but needless to say, I never used a Wimpod in battle again. Fluffy is the exclusive ability of Beware. It sort of acts like Furfru's ability and halves the damage taken from physical attacks, which comes in handy for a big physical powerhouse. However, unlike Fur Coat, this one comes with a slight downside. Due to Beware's extra Fluffy down, he has developed a weakness to fire-type attacks. So it's not the worst handicap to have to deal with, but it also doesn't make it overpowered to fight against. Full Metal Body is Solgaleo's ability, and it makes it impossible for opposing Pokémon to lower its stats. It can still lower its own stats, of course. This is essentially the same as the ability Clear Body before it, having the same functionality. The same is true for Lunala's ability Shadow Shield, being the same as the previous ability Multiscale. These are both pretty decent abilities, but they already existed, so I'm not sure that the big fancy name change automatically makes it a legendary enough. Galvanize is a new ability for the Alolan Geodude family. Galvanize functions the same as Aerolate and all those other eight abilities. It changes normal type moves to electric type and increases the power. Can you imagine explosion with increased power? I imagine a couple of generations down the line we'll have an ability like this for every type. Innards Out is the ability of Pukumuku Muku and it deals back the damage equal to the amount of the final blow that knocks Pukumuku Muku out. So if it's a one-hit KO, it'll deal back its full HP in damage to the attacker. This can be easily circumvented by using False Swipe or Hold Back to leave it with one HP and then finish it off the next turn. As pointed out in the comments section of my Worst Abilities video, 
This is a pretty terrible ability, and I would have put it on that list, but honestly, I forgot it existed. It's pretty bad when you're terrible and forgettable. Liquid Voice is a very interesting ability. It turns all sound moves into water moves. This ability is like Long Reach in that it's exclusive to his starter line, this time being the Primarina line. Also like Long Reach, this ability is currently unavailable. Primarina is all about singing and voices and things, so this ability makes sense in the lore. And there's an interesting relationship between this ability and Incineroar's other signature move. All the starters received a signature move and Z move, and the other two got unique abilities, but for whatever reason, Incineroar was given a second signature move instead. This move is called Throat Chop, which sounds completely brutal, but it prevents sound modes from being used for two turns. It's just neat to see how certain Pokémon develop natural counters to one another. Merciless is the ability of Toxapex. As if it weren't annoying enough, Merciless makes any move a critical hit if the target is poison. Being a poison type, Toxapex has no shortage of moves that have a chance to poison the target. But its most stupidly useful and annoying weapon is without a doubt Baneful Bunker. It's basically spiky shield except instead of simply receiving damage upon physical contact, target becomes poisoned. So, in recap, its most prominent move gets a massive buff from its ability. That's some great synergy, but boy is it infuriating. Power Construct is the ability that lets Zygarde change between his different forms. Again, once the HP is below half, the Pokémon turns it into its complete form, this being Zygarde 100%. I've never used it personally, I haven't made the effort to go around and collect all the cells, but it's still a mystery as to why it's here in Alola and not over in the Kalos region where Zygarde is supposed to live. The ability Receiver lets the user gain the ability of a fallen ally. For one, that means it's only usable in doubles. Secondly, it means that until an ally dies, you don't really have an ability. I suppose you could use Lunar Dance or Memento or another one of those self-sacrificing moves in order to ensure that you get a really good ability, but that seems a little too involved to be a consistent strategy. But the potential to have any other ability is undoubtedly a great asset to any team. Oh, hey, would you look at that? Apparently there's another new ability exclusive to the Alolan Grimer family called the Power of Alchemy that does the exact same thing. Man, they're really bad about doing that this generation. Who knew? So, if you don't want to be stuck with a Passimian as your only receptacle for all your abilities, you might want to try an Alolan Muck in the mix. Prism Armor is the ability exclusive to the legendary Pokémon Necrozma. Yes, he is in fact a legendary Pokémon and not an Ultra Beast. I know there's been some confusion going around, but this difference in ability is just further proof. I said it's an exclusive ability, but it behaves identical to the abilities Filter and Solid Rock, which reduce the power of super effective moves by 25%. I've always liked Filter as an ability and wished it would give wider availability. However, it would be overpowered, so I see why they don't do that. RKS System is the new ability of Sylvalli, the evolved form of Type Null. It allows Sylvalli to change into any type depending on the item it holds, called Memories. This functions the same as Arceus' ability Multi-Type, and the different plates that it holds. In addition, Sylvalli gets an exclusive move called Multi-Attack, that changes type as well. I haven't personally had a chance to use this, but the opportunity to have any type to fill in any holes on your team would be quite the advantage. Schooling is Wishy-Washy's new ability. Normally, Wishy-Washy is a tiny, unassuming, timid-looking fish, but this ability allows him to call a school of friends to basically turn into a bigger, scarier version of the school in Finding Nemo. The way it works is when Wishy-Washy has a lot of health, it's a big, powerful school, and when it gets lower, he reverts to his solo form. If you ask me, it should be the other way around. If friends come to help me when I'm down, then I appreciate them all the more. But if they're always running away, they probably aren't very good friends to begin with. Shields Down activates upon entering battle and gives many or higher defenses and prevents any status conditions. Once his health lowers to half, the outer shell breaks and his attack and speed increase. However, he is once again susceptible to statuses. Only then can you discover what flavor the gooey center of your Minior is. Soulheart is Megirna's new ability. It's essentially the special variant of Moxie, in that if the opponent faints, then special attack gets increased. However, Soulheart has the added advantage of taking effect if anyone on the field faints, including an ally, 
which gives it a slight edge over Moxie in that regard. Stakeout is a fantastic new ability in terms of competitive viability. Stakeout doubles the damage against any Pokémon that comes into battle on that turn. With the absurd prevalence of constant switching as a battle tactic, it's great to have an ability that might make players think twice before switching in just to get a better matchup. Unfortunately, as of right now, the only Pokémon with access to this ability is Young Goose and Gumshoes. So, the choices are a bit underwhelming, but hopefully it'll gain more traction in the future. Tangled Hair is the ability for Alolan Diglett and Dugtrio. Apparently, their luscious locks are so important that they come with a brand new ability, which causes Pokémon that make physical contact to have their speed lowered. A decent enough ability, and one that could easily be transferred to other Pokémon. There's one I'm trying to think of. It's on the tip of my tongue. Water Bubble is the ability given to Oroquinid. It lessens the effects of Fire-type moves on the target and prevents burning. This is especially good for Oroquinid. Being a Water-type, he naturally resists fire. However, the added Bug-type makes fire neutrally effective, but this ability brings it back down to resisted status. The added resistance to fire attacks also puts this ability above the likes of Water Veil and other means of preventing burns, and it isn't so specific that it can't be adopted by others later. And finally, Water Compaction is the unique ability of Sandy Gast and Palosand. When hit with a Water-type move, this Pokémon's defense goes up by two stages. This is an especially good attention to detail, because in reality, when sand gets wet, it, well, compacts. This ability is decent enough, and having used a Palosand on my team, it did come in effect in certain dire situations, and was very good with an Assault Fest. Really, the biggest drawback is that it raises physical defense, while the overwhelming majority of water moves are special. So, in most cases, it's a moot point. But that doesn't make it a bad ability, just middle of the road. I had a theory before Sun and Moon came out that they were intentionally giving these new and drastically different abilities to give some incentive to use Pokémon that may not have been as desirable otherwise. I mean, face it, would anyone really use a Young Goose if it didn't do double damage on Switch Ends? It makes sense to give Pokémon that may be considered traditionally less competitive an edge to help them stand up against the regular powerhouses. And that's a little bit about all the new abilities that have been introduced in Pokémon Sun and Moon. Hopefully it's been informative to learn about these interesting new additions to the Pokémon games. I'm sure there'll be many more to come in future generations. Let me know your favorites down below, or your least favorites. Also be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And we'll see you around next time.